Hello, the section for today is literal equations and formulas. This is a pretty tricky uh, concept, so I'll be expecting to see great notes in class tomorrow. Uh, you'll need good examples for yourself so you can refer back to them constantly as you're working on the problem set. So a literal equation is an equation that has two or more different variables in it. So notice this equation here has both a y and an x. You'll see uh, most formulas that you use are literal equations. As you move forward in algebra and algebra 2, it's really important to be able to manipulate equations and literal equations in particular so that only one of the variables is on a side all by itself and the other variables on there are on the other side. We use these different forms uh, to do different things in mathematics, so you definitely need to learn how to do this. So in this case, we're going to solve for y. What that means is we're not going to get an answer like 8 or 7 or negative 5 when we solve for y. What we're going to do is we're going to get y by itself and then everything else on the other side, including any other variables involved in the problem. So in this case, we have 2 times y and then 4x is being added to it. So we don't really care that about these other variables. So we can just pretend it's just any old regular number that we're used to dealing with. So the first thing we're going to want to do is get that 4x on the other side. And we do that by using the inverse operation of subtracting 4x, right? Because 4x is being added, so we'll subtract it. That leaves us with 2y on the left side and 8 minus 4x on the right side. Now... Uh, we have this y being multiplied by 2. As we know, the inverse of multiplication by 2 is division by 2. When you're dividing by 2, though, it has to be to everything. So the easiest way to do that is just put a fraction bar under the whole other side and put the 2 there. So our final answer is going to be y equals 8 minus 4x over 2. Um, now... This can be reduced because both 8 and 4 can be divided by 2. So, so 8 divided by 2 would be 4, and then 4 divided by 2 would be 2. So we can say y equals 4 minus 2x. And that's it. That's the actual final answer. So like I said, when you're solving for a variable, when other variables are involved, it just means you're getting that variable by itself and everything else is on the other side. All right, let's try um, some more problems like this. In the next uh, four problems we're going to do, we're going to be solving for x, all of them for x, uh, just to keep it simple. All right, in this case, uh, we have x, and it's on the one side here, but we have two different x's. Uh, when that happens, we need to combine them. So let's see how we're going to do that. Uh, we're going to use the distributive property, which is kind of the reverse of the distributive property. So I'm going to put an example of it that you've used before. Uh, so if we had something like 5x minus 2x, what you can do is 5x minus 2x is uh, 3x, right? And so what's happening is you're actually um, factoring out that x and doing the 5 minus 2 and then putting the x back, right? So we're going to concentrate on this thing right here. So when you have a term with an x, and then you're subtracting a term with an x, you can just take the coefficients and set them aside in the parentheses here. So uh, here, the coefficient of this is a 1. Remember, whenever there's no coefficient, it's a 1. So what we're going to do is we're just going to say a minus 1 right here times x. And if you were to use the distributive property, you would see that these two things are actually the same, right? a times x minus x times 1. And that, that's what you have there. So now that we have this um, x combined there, now all we have to do is get rid of this a minus 1. This is actually going to be real easy. The a minus 1 is being multiplied to the x, so we need to do the inverse of that, which is divide. And we just divide by that whole thing because the whole thing was multiplying, right? And so we do that on both sides, as usual. And um, the a minus 1s are going to cancel out. And 
uh, leaving us with x equals c over a minus 1. There we go. We have solved for x. Let's try another. Uh, in this case, we're solving for x again. Um, the x and the v are both being divided by b right now. So technically, we have x over b minus v over b. So we need to get rid of that fraction first. Um, keeping in mind that this whole x minus v, both of those are being divided by b. It's really simple to take care of that by doing the inverse, which is multiplying by b. So we can just say, well, if this whole thing was being divided by b, we're going to multiply the whole thing by b as well, and that will get rid of it. Okay, And so we end up with, on the right side, x minus v. On the right side, we have b times y. And then to get the x by itself, all we need to do is that last uh, addition of v. And so we'll end up with x all alone, which is what we want, and by plus v. Um, usually when we're solving for something, we put that on the left side. So I'm just going to flip this over to the left side here. And that's our answer. Let's keep going. I got two more. Here we have uh, 1x, which is nice. Um, this is actually one of the easiest ones we're going to do. Uh, all we have to do is get rid of this division by a. Simple. Uh, to get rid of a division by a, we multiply by a both sides, as always. Um, so the a's cancel out here, leaving us with an x. So we're already done with that side. And over here, remember, this is kind of like saying a over 1. And so simply, it's just a y over b. That's it. Simple. One stepper. All right, let's go to another. So now we have, uh, this is a little more complicated. So we have an x here and an x over here. So we're going to need to get these on the same side, and we're going to have to combine them. So this one's going to be much more exciting. So first of all, we need to uh, deal with this distributive property situation because this x, not only is it being subtracted by b, it's also being multiplied by 4. And uh, it's not going to help to divide by 4 here because then this x will be divided by 4, and we're going to have to deal with that. So uh, first thing which we can do is distribute. So 4x minus 4b equals x. All right. That's a little cleaner now. We've gotten rid of that parentheses there. Now we need uh, the x is on the same side, so we can subtract x from both sides. A lot of people are concerned when they do something like this because that would leave a 0 on one side. That's totally acceptable, so don't worry about it. Uh, we have this equals 0, right? Um, now we're actually really close, so it's not as hard as I originally thought it was going to be. Um, so remember, 4x minus x was 3x, and we have this minus 4b. So we're just going to add 4b to both sides. Uh, now we're left with 3x on the left and 4b on the right. And now it's as simple as dividing both sides by 3. And we get x equals 4b over 3. All done because those canceled out. All right, so remember, um, if you need to, Rewind the video and uh, make sure to have good notes because you're going to want to use these for uh, examples for yourself as you're doing the work tomorrow. Thank you.